So uh, here we go. The new Colosseum updates are out. And they've changed around a lot of the invocations. Uh, they removed Doom Scorpions. They added a new one, Manti Mayhem. They've totally nerfed Myopia. Uh, Doom still sucks. And there's a lot of new stuff to see. So this is going to be an updated guide um, where we get to see uh, how to make it through the first 11 waves of the Colosseum. And I do have a Wave 12 Soul Heretic Guide made. You can check that out in the description. But this run is going to be focused on the first 11 waves with the new Inbos um, and the Ranger buff, the Ranger Fremnik buff. So let's look at the gear real quick. I have mostly Max Mage. Um, this is not a budget setup. As for the helmet, uh, I recommend bringing a melee helmet. So I suppose your, uh, your Torba Helm or... Maybe your face guard. Um, I bring Burroughs gloves just because I don't want to do a, a, a glove switch. You know, save a little inventory space. Uh, I have an Infernal Cape. You don't need it. You can bring a Fire Cape. You can bring a Majorina 2 Cape. Doesn't matter. Uh, this is really just for the final boss. It's not going to help with the waves much. Uh, and a good shield that has um, range defense bonus. So I'm using the Olydnus Ward because it has both range defense bonus and magic attack bonus, but you can bring a crystal shield. Uh, I think you can even bring the, um, uh, the dragon fire shield, uh, DFS. And uh, yeah, for the inventory, I have a five way melee swap. Uh, this is really only for the boss, but if I switch pillars, depending on the wave, I might swap into my tank gear just so I can tank a hit. So that would be uh, chest, lay or, uh, chest body and plate legs. Um, I am bringing a shadow. That's going to be my main weapon for the 11 waves. And I do have a heart. You don't need the heart. Um, otherwise, 10 brew, 9 restore, uh, super combat for the final boss. And here are my runes to just cast barrage. So yeah, let's send it. Let's check out what the new Colosseum is like. So if you've seen my last guide, I'm really not changing much. Um, my my setup is almost exactly the same. Uh, and I will start out the same by dropping a potion over here. You can check out my tiles and use them. They will be in the description. Uh, but we're going to be engaging from this engage tile. This is the tile we're going to engage from. And if you see my visual metronome, this is the visual metronome plugin. I have it displayed above my head, and I also have it displayed above my inventory. And this will be very, very important, and we'll talk about that when we go along with the waves. But this is the visual metronome plugin. And if you want to run the Colosseum and oftentimes get very simple solves right off the bat, I highly recommend this, and we'll talk about it as we go along. So let me set up Blood Barrage as my autocast, and we'll begin the waves. The wave one is pretty trivial. Uh, so we do still start with Blasphemy, but to be honest, Relentless has gotten a lot better than it used to be. So Relentless is, uh, you could possibly start with this. I will be starting with Bl Blasphemy. Um, I don't have a problem taking Relentless, especially a little later on. So here we go. Throw that heart on, pray mage, and we're just gonna, oops, missed him, uh, barrage that stack really quick. Throw that second barrage, that'll kill the melee, and then we just try to do as much damage to the major as possible before they all three uh, get out of their freeze. So here we go, can we kill the major? It's nice if we don't, because then we can get a big combo hit right here. We can just barrage them all down. Sadly, the ranger doesn't want to die. And we want to hurry up and get over to our engage tile. Oops, looks like we did get a melee. So if you don't kill them fast enough, the melee spawns. Not a big deal. We can take our prey off and safe spot him on uh, the northwest pillar. We're going to be using the northwest pillar for this guy. But as soon as he downs... We want to hurry up and get back to our engage tile. 
And now the real fun starts. So let's check it out. Let's look at our inbos. Um, I really don't like bees, even after the change. Uh, solar flare is okay. It's not that bad, but I hate it for the boss. And I'd like to take it if I have to take it after wave 6. Like wave 7 through 11, solar flare maybe. Uh, we'll just stick with Blasphemy too, not a big deal. But here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to do the engage. So I'm standing on my engage tile. And when my visual metronome says 1, when it says 1, I'm going to click continue and begin the wave. And then when it says 1 again, I'm going to hurry up and run to either A or B. It doesn't matter. We're not worried about off ticking. We're just going to run to A or B. To set the wave so here we go when my visual and metronome says one i'll click click throw a range prey on and click i click again on one and check it out only one of those monsters can see me i freeze this wave run a little bit away and start barraging this way i don't have to deal with the ranger i don't have to deal with the melee -er. i can just run back here and heal a little bit so here we go. We can just nuke down the ranger as fast as possible. And we will be having a melee spawn from this northern gate. And he's going to be coming pretty soon. We probably don't need augury on. It just speeds it up a bit. But we're not going to be struggling with super restores. We're not going to be struggling with bruise. Here he comes. He's safe spotted on the opposite side of the pillar. And because his true tile, his southwest tile is adjacent to the mage i can actually barrage them and kill two birds with one stone so here we go let's just barrage them both and i can heal off them both as well so no need to waste some bruise uh even at this short range myopia if we did have it especially in the later waves no big deal we can always barrage this little duo from right here very safe oops why did i do that so yeah, if we're lucky, it kills them both at the same time. If not, we'll just deal with whoever's left over. Looks like that killed the melee, so we'll just take down the mage. And we can do lazy flicking. Everything is on a 5 tick tile, but the most important thing is to get back to our engage tile when the new wave starts. And here, check it out, it's myopia. So let's do a myopia run to see that it is possible even with the new uh myopia nerf i suppose so check it out we'll put our barrage gear on we're ready to barrage we'll select myopia and when our tick counter hits one we'll hit continue so here we go when it says one click pray on and click so we click both times on one so now when they come in they get stationary boom freeze them run away and just barrage down the clump. No big deal. Get a little healing off of it. We don't have to barrage the last bit if we don't want to. And then we can just deal with the major. So we do have myopia on. We will be leveling it up. And I'm going to show some fancy techniques that we didn't get to look at in the last video. For how to deal with certain kind of solves if we do have myopia. If... If we're having, uh, if, if our distance is short range and we can't just be barrage chilling, uh, cheesing, sorry, uh, there are ways to deal with stacks like this. And we're going to investigate that through this video. So let's just kill the melee and then I'll show you what you want to do when we have this ranger major stack and the major is in the back. All right. So the melee is down, and here's how I'm going to deal with these guys. Because I don't want to off-tick them. I can run as far back as possible, right? And I'm going to go one more step back. So here we go. Throw my range prey on. The ranger is going to hit me. And I'm going to run out a little bit, and then run back in. And that drags the major into me. So check it out. Now I can deal with just the major all by himself. Right, So that's a really good technique to break up the major when he's stuck behind the ranger in, and I have my opion so I wouldn't be able to necessarily reach them both. 
Or rather, I could hit the ranger, but they would both be seeing me, and I, I didn't want to off-tick. So we do not need to off-tick to solve these waves. We can break them up oftentimes and deal with one at a time, which is exactly what we're doing right now. So let's keep our heart up. It just speeds things up a bit. We'll take down that ranger. We can be lazy flicking if we want to save a little bit of prayer. Right? If we lazy flick, it doesn't use any of our prayer points. And that just means that we turn our prayer on on the same tick that he's attacking. So we hurry up. We get back to our engage tile and check it out. We can take myopia too. It's not a big deal. Not much changes with this new technique. So on one, we'll click. Here we go. Click. Click. And all we got to deal with is the mage. Check it out. The wave is solved right off the bat. And for pretty much every Fremnet clump, we're just going to freeze them when they get together and barrage them down. So let's see. Let's see if we can drag that mage in because we do have myopia on, right? So we'll just walk to this side of the pillar. It'll drag him in. Manicor goes active and now we kill the mage. Right, so we can drag the mage in if he's a little far away and we have myopia on. If you don't have myopia on, not a big deal. You can hit him from long range. But if you do have myopia on, you might want to drag him in like I just did there. Right, and because these two are adjacent to each other, we can actually barrage them and kill them both at the same time. So this is a nice little technique. Get a little bonus healing. Kill two birds with one stone. Increase our DPS a little bit. Just a nice little technique, especially if you have their Southwest True Tile noted. And I think they're down. Nope, one more hit maybe. Oh, the melee just does not want to die. It's okay. There he goes. So now we just deal with the Mana Core. And I will say that they have a new invo um, that they added with this most recent patch update, and that's called Manti Mayhem. Um, I don't like it. I do try to stay away from it when possible because I don't want to take um, those extra hits if I'm potentially running from pillar to pillar and I'm forced into taking a Manticore uh, off, off flick, off prey. So here we go, wave 5, and we can finally take upgraded level 3 myopia. Now, myopia isn't necessarily the best thing to take. And there are better things to take. But if you've watched my first guide, we use a lot of myopia cheesing, and I want to show that it is still possible to beat the Colosseum, even with a fully upgraded myopia. It's not going to change things that much. So here we go. Let me actually top my prayer off just a little bit. And we'll begin the wave on one. So click. Click. Right? And the wave is solved. So freeze them down. We don't have to deal with anything, actually. Everyone got trapped. Even the Manticore, which is really nice. Right? So myopia just dragged me in a little, in a little bit. We don't need our... Uh, augury on. We can just slow kill him, get the heals off when possible. And now we can just deal with the mana core while we wait for the melee to spawn. He is coming pretty soon. Oops, don't need that prayer on. Right, and when this guy goes down, we'll deal with that little, uh, the major melee combo. And we can just barrage them both. Whatever health we're missing, we can heal off those guys. There we go. Oops, should have put that prayer on. Doesn't really matter, because we're going to heal off them anyway. And just drink super restore as necessary. We have... Plenty of Restore will easily make it through all 11 waves, even with the Restore Potions. Or even with only 9 Restores. No problem at all. 
since we've fully drank one restore, we can pick up the one that we've dropped, and now we don't even have to worry about it. Right? And because these two are adjacent, we can blood barrage both of them as well. Get a little extra damage on that ranger before he actually uh, line of sights us. So, you can see that these first five waves, every wave was pretty much immediately solved. Solved right on the engage. And that's because of the way we're engaging. It doesn't guarantee an insta-solve. But uh, many times it just naturally happens and that's by using the engage tile and running directly over to A or B. I personally prefer A. Uh, that's kind of like my default run to tile is A. Because then I can barrage the, uh, sometimes I can barrage the Fremnix as they round the corner. Um, and they might not even get one hit off on me. Very nice. We'll try to showcase that with this next wave if possible. Kind of depends. It doesn't always work. Sometimes it's better to just wait for the Fremnix to stabilize. But we'll see what we can do with the next wave. Alright, so dodge that mortar. Take down this ranger. And we're going to hurry up and get back to our engage tile, right? Always got to start there. It's crucial that we begin on the engage tile. All right, there we go. Let's throw that hard on. All right, so this time we can choose between frailty or volatility. So this is exploding. I do not like to take frailty. Don't take it if you don't have to. Explosions aren't so bad, especially if they're level one. So let's go with this and we'll engage on one. So here we go. We'll click on one. Click. Click. And there we go. The wave is instantly solved. We just have to deal with the mage. This is actually perfect because the melee will be coming in with his little mage buddy as well. But I really like this new method, especially since the, um, especially since the, oh, actually, let me drag this guy in really quick before things get sketchy. There we go. But yeah, because uh, the ranger does more damage now, he used to be like really nerfed and he only did like one or two damage at a time and he could pretty much just be ignored. He wasn't a big deal. Um, freezing them on A and then running a little bit to the west, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's actually very nice and convenient. Um, I don't have to, you know, tank any of the hits from the ranger, any of the hits from the melee, you know. I can just freeze them, run west, and do a little free healing off of them. Uh, and I don't have to worry about multiple gear swaps, like maybe a uh, Venator Bow or uh, one-shotting the melee from Nick with my shadow. Or There's a lot of things I can avoid. I can just purely barrage the whole clump down. And it really doesn't affect us much at all. So here's what we're going we're gonna to do. We have a nasty triple stack. And when we have a triple stack, and we've talked about this in the last video, we can run diagonally, which is what we're going to do here. So we're going to flick the mana core. I got my melee gear on, my tanker on. We're going to flick the mana core and then swap to prey range. So here we go. We're running diagonal. Boom, 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 and pray range. And we didn't take a single hit of damage. The tank armor did its job. So here comes that mana core. We wait, we wait for it to get stabilized. And then we can just take them down. Simple. So if you have a triple stack like that, like what we just had... Running diagonal, uh, if, if all you're dealing with is a triple stack, running down here to the southeast pillar will instantly solve that stack. You will always get a layout like this, right? Where I can just deal with one at a time. So if you didn't want to do fancy prayer techniques, if you didn't want to do any off ticking, uh, you can just throw your tank gear on, depending on the wave. Uh, depending on who's looking at you, you can just throw your tank gear on, run diagonal, and it solves the wave. Alright, so we just take down the mana core. 
and deal with the two rangers. Perfect. And now that we're entering, this is wave 6 right here. Now that we're going into wave 7, we're going to start seeing the big major, the Shockwave Colossus, and the Minotaurs. So new monsters are going to be showing up on wave 7 to 11. But we're going to deal with the initial engage the exact same way. Nothing's changing. We're going to be engaging from our engage tile and running straight over to A or B. Right? So really, not that much has changed since uh, since the update. Uh, the nice thing is a lot of invos have become, you know, more reasonable to use. Um, which, hopefully, we get a chance to see some of them. And the myopia nerf, it's really not that bad. There are ways to deal with these waves, even without um, blood barrage cheesing. Um, and if you have, if, if you're not taking myopia, if you're doing a full run without myopia, uh, you can still do your little blood barrage method. Nothing has really changed. So here we go. We'll get back to our engage tile. Now we're one tile off, but we need to get to that engage tile. So here's what we're going to do. We're still going to engage on one. And now that we're in wave seven... We're going to start with our Prey Mage. When those uh, Shockwave Colossus are active, which is wave 7, 8, and 11, we're going to engage the wave with Prey Mage. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to click Continue on 1, and we're going to get down to our Engage tile. Click, get to the Engage, and click. And there it is, the Shockwave Colossus. He's looking right at us. And we're going to deal with the Fremnix the exact same way. And just as before, the wave is instantly solved. The engage tile really makes these waves pretty trivial oftentimes. Oftentimes. And this isn't some resetted run. I, I've only been on, you know, this is the first run of the day. This is literally my first run of the day. Um... The waves just spawn this way quite often, not 100% of the time. They don't always spawn this way, but oftentimes they do. It's the beauty of this engage method. And your engages will not be as smooth if you use B5 tile. B5 is nice, B5 is okay, but when you're running from B5 to A, um, the monster, well, uh, I should say actually this, if you use the engage tile to run to A, rather than B5, um, you get one extra tick before the monsters can line of sight you, and it actually causes them to path in a much smoother transition, which really gives you um, a very high chance of just getting those spooned waves, which is what we're getting. And a lot of it is thanks to using this engage tile. So I highly recommend it. I hope you guys are seeing how I'm doing this engage. Uh, we actually used this engage tile on my last video pre-nerf or pre, um, you know, because they changed all the invos around before all that happened. I also used this engage tile and we got very spooned waves that time as well. And it just goes to show that this tile really works wonders. And you will get simple waves quite often. Maybe we don't. And we'll see what happens if we get a really nasty wave and how we're going to solve that. So we can just drag this mana core out. Bring him over to us. I don't know if he saw me or not. I don't think he did. Nope. He's still inactive. And we'll just take him down hard on. And we'll start shadowing the mana core. Yeah, so far we've been getting extremely spooned waves. Let's see what happens in these next few. Eight can get tricky. Nine is usually pretty trivial. Let's see what eight looks like. Oops, a little slow there. And he splashed a zero anyway.
I'm focusing on his health. I want to get back to my engage tile as soon as possible. I do have Myopia 3 on. Didn't kill him. There we go. I think that's it. There we go. We'll throw that barrage gear on. Keep our prayer high. Uh, so not the best in bows. You never want to take red flag. Red flag is horrible. Do not take red flag. It messes up the full strategy. Never take this. Uh, it's awful. Frailty. I don't want it. We're probably just going to go with bigger explosions. Uh, volatility too. And here we go. We're going to engage on one. I'll do it on the next one. Here we go. Ready and click. Click. And another totally free wave. Wow, it's just perfect. I almost feel bad that these waves are so spooned, but it just goes to show that with this method, you can get those waves very, very often without even trying. Oops. So let's see. Now, if I stand here the Minotaur could accidentally get stuck in that little corner. So I'll actually stand on A. It lines them all up nice and perfect, and it will force the Minotaur to come all the way down. So we don't risk him accidentally getting stuck in that little wedge. So here he comes. We'll step back a tile, and we can even barrage off him and get our health back. And we have a very nasty wave. Four monsters all looking at us, and we're going to discuss how we can solve this. So one way to solve this is to run diagonal, which we have talked about. But it's good to recognize when we don't need to run diagonal, right? And here's what's going to happen. If we run straight south on this specific setup, what's going to happen? The Shockwave Colossus is going to pat down here and get stuck on the pillar. The Manicor is going to follow him. He's also going to pat down here and get stuck on the pillar. And we can deal with just the two rangers. The rangers are going to come around the side. Okay, so that's how we're going to deal with this. And the way that we're going to run down there is we're going to pray against the Shockwave Colossus. And we'll just tank the, ma or the ranger hits as we run. So here we go. And I do throw Augury on just because it gives us a little um, physical defense to help with those rangers. And they splash on us anyway. No big deal. And look, they all lined up exactly as I said they would. The Shockwave Colossus and the Manicor got stuck behind the pillar. And we can just deal with the two Rangers one at a time. Just dodge those mortars. So we could have ran diagonal. That was actually a really good opportunity to run diagonal. But if we recognize when we can run south, it just makes it even easier. We actually get a nicer solve running south on this wave than we would have if we went diagonal. So if you want, you can re rewind the video, watch what the uh, watch like the orientation of those monsters. What did they look like, and how were we able to determine? Okay, we can run south on this one. All right, the manacor still has not seen us. He's still uh, asleep. So it's actually because we don't know if he's going to be either range or mage. Let's just play it safe. We'll run down here, praying mage, um, and, and block all damage incoming. And that way we don't have to worry about potentially needing to off-tick the mana core or run to a different pillar. So what did he do? See, look, he was range. So it's actually a very good decision that we came down here because now we can deal with him one at a time. Without having to worry about setting them up for an off tick. Oops, a little slow there. That's okay, we'll just pray, or we'll just uh, heal off the Shadow Colossus. Or the Shockwave Colossus. Ah. Oh. Keep going early. Really playing bad against this stupid mana core. Alright, and let's get a little healing off with this Shockwave Colossus. 
Might even use a couple sips of brew, but we have so much of it, it's really not a big idea. Now, there is a little bit of a myopia bug. You can see right there, um, or it's not even a myopia bug. It's actually a uh, an autocast bug um, where I can't always hit him, and I will show that off. So be wary of this. Um, autocasting is currently registering distance from the southwest tile. Notice I can attack him four tiles away. If I'm four tiles away from his southwest tile, but if I come down here and yet again I'm four tiles away, right? I will not be able to reach him. So it's actually registering distance based on the southwest tile, and this is important to note, right? If I go here and I'm four tiles away from southwest, it works. Um, so it is important to note that you don't want to accidentally get yourself messed up. I'm actually standing so close to him right now that I, I'm at risk of the volatility explosions. So we'll get back down here. I'm a little low. Let me just top myself off a bit. Doesn't really matter. I have tons of supplies. Really shouldn't have messed up against that mana core, but it's okay. So let's see what we got. We got volatility three. I'd rather avoid that. Now get this, right? Dynamic duo. It will spawn a second set of majors, but there's only one more wave that has majors in it, and that's going to be wave 11. So this is actually free all the way until wave 11. So let's just take that, and like before, we'll, we'll click on one. One, pray range, and one. There we go. And we have a double mana core, so this is actually pretty nasty. Let's come down here. Right? Because if we come down here... The wave is solved. So no one got a chance to hit us. We do have that Minotaur coming in hot. So there was an example of a nasty wave spawn. We had two mana cores looking directly at us. And because we used quick thinking and quick reaction time, we were able to come to the northeast pillar and we didn't even have to worry about it. I think the only things to hit us, because we were playing range was uh, maybe we took a hit from the Fremnex? Not a big deal. And now the Minotaur comes in nice and slow, and we can deal with him all alone. Now Volatility is on. He'll explode, so when he explodes, I'll try to close this, or I'll try to run down here to the east real quick before I take any damage. And it looks like both mana cores are mage and we have a ranger. So we'll actually deal with the mana cores first. So we don't have to deal with any fancy off ticking with that ranger. There we go. And we'll try to take out the back one. I don't think the ranger sees me if I stand... Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. I don't think the ranger sees me if I stand right there. So that's actually how we're going to engage. So let's see. Get ready to flick. Boom, boom, boom. Hit that mana core. Boom, boom, boom. Right? And we can just off-tick them like this. So when you have two mana cores looking at you, they attack um, back to back. On these five tick cycles. So this is how you double mana core flick. When you have two mana cores on you at the same time. Very useful to know. Um, when you get the timing down. It's actually totally free if they're attacking you like that. Not bad at all. And it looks like we're going to be going into wave 10 right after this. So perfect. We're getting near the end of the Colosseum, guys. And it's no harder than it ever was. Even with myopia nerfs. We can still do the exact same engages. We got to see new ways to drag out potential majors if they're behind the rangers. Right back on that earlier wave. Right, and we'll just take him down. Be ready to run to our engage tile. Never zone out and get stuck out in the middle of no man's land. Always be ready to go back to your engage tile. Alright, don't get hit by the mortar.
Hopefully he goes down, and it looks like that might be it. Yep, we get back to our engage tile and set up for wave 10. And what do we got? Okay, so this time we got Relentless. So Relentless totally got nerfed. Um, it got a lot more convenient to be taking this invocation, so we can take Relentless. Um, it ignores 33% of our defense, so really not a big deal. It used to be horrible. It used to be so they would never hit zeros anymore. That is not the case anymore, so this is a nice invo to take. So we'll take it and we'll engage on one. Here we go. Click. Pray range and click. All right, perfect. And we're just going to have to deal with that ranger. But the, the Minotaur will be coming in with his mage buddy. So let's see how this works out. Oops. Kill this guy as fast as possible. So this time we are going to create that little corner. And hopefully, um, hopefully the major... Can get stuck in there it'd be really nice if the major can get stuck in there in the meantime we'll try to take this guy down as fast as possible so if that major does get on us we might have to off tick we could potentially tank him all right so they are off tick now what we could do is we could eat through it or off tick so that's what we're going to do we're going to do a little off ticking so this is two monsters at once not a big deal. Oops. Yeah, that was really bad. I didn't notice that my prayer was so low. But yeah, we can off tick the two at the same time if you want. You could potentially just be brewing through it all. We're not going to do that. Uh, that was actually really risky. That was... Uh, I don't think it was chanced, but it was way too close for comfort. I didn't see that my prayer was going out, and I kind of ignored that ranger. So, poor gameplay. Play better than me on that. But yeah, that was a slightly messy wave. Um, they weren't guaranteed to be off tick. We did kind of get lucky. It's too bad that the major didn't get stuck up here in that little nook and cranny, but it is what it is. Sometimes you get a messy run. Uh, but it's okay. We can recover from this, and it's not going to be a big deal. Just got to be careful. He will explode, so let's not run in early. And let's figure out how we're going to break up and get this Minotaur down. So we can get this Minotaur down by dragging him out. The Manticores can't see me. The Ranger might be able to when I do this. But I'm going to run over here, drag that Minotaur out, and then run back. Easy peasy. Right, and because he is going to be exploding, we'll walk back one more tile. Be safe from his explosion. Put our barrage gear on, and let's see if we can just get our full health back. Right, so that was a little messy. Uh, there was no need to ever change pillars. The ranger can potentially be nuked down as fast as possible, and when that major spawns, you can either just continue on with the ranger... You can prey range and just brew through the major, but that's really sketchy. You don't want to do it that way. Uh, the, the best way to do it would be to off tick them. And you saw me doing my attempt at an off tick, but I get a little distracted. Um, you guys can probably off tick better than I do, especially when I'm trying to talk in a mic. I just get uh, distracted and play poorly. But I'm not going to make excuses. You guys will play better than I do. So here's that uh, mana core stack again. We're going to run out, hit that back one, and we'll take care of both the mana cores at the same time. Let's uh, let's get our prayer restore up a little bit. And here we go. One, two, three. Hit that one in the back. All right, and now we're off ticking. And I'm hitting that one in the back because I don't want the one in the front to die first. And then that ranger can potentially walk in and start seeing me. So it is nice if you think about it and have the opportunity to kill the one in the back first. If possible. It's not necessary. But it makes the future a lot more convenient. Because now look, that ranger couldn't move in and I can just deal with the second mana core. Now 
And I think he's down. Yeah, he's down. So we're going all the way into wave 11, guys. Let's actually, because we are a little low health, let's just heal off this ranger. It's free when he's the only one left. And we need to be wary of wave 11 because we do have dynamic duo on. So there will be two majors. And now we actually risk a very messy wave spawn. Wave 11 has potential to just go horribly. And maybe if that happens, we get to see how we're going to solve it. So let's see what happens with wave 11. It'd be nice if it was spooned, but at the same time, it'd be nice to show how we're going to deal with it if it's not totally spooned, right? So it's going to be luck of the draw. Let's just see what we get. Otherwise, we have plenty of supplies to finish up wave 11 and even beat the boss. Not a problem, guys. So let's see. Get down to our engage tile right away. I think he's got one hit left. There we go. Let's get down to our engage tile. Okay. So because the majors, there's two of them. And there's going to be two mana cores and a ranger. I'm actually going to begin this one with uh, my tank gear on. Um, and I don't want to take solar flare. So we will end up because, you know, the boss is a lot easier without solar flare. And I have additional, you know, I can hug my pillar a little nicer if I don't have solar flare. So let's just take Relentless 2. Relentless 2 is not that bad. Um, Relentless has really been nerfed pretty bad. Relentless 3 isn't even really as bad as the old Relentless 1 used to be. So let's do this. We'll top our prayer off just in case. And we'll engage the wave on 1. So here we go. Click. Click. All right. And we got the Shockwave Colossus looking at us. Not a bad wave. I don't even think that mana core could see us. So actually totally spooned. Totally spooned wave. I don't want to deal with the mana core. So I will just tank whatever uh, this explosion this guy does. I'm just going to tank it. There we go. And I'll try to heal. Let's see. One, two, three, four. I don't think I'm safe to heal. So yeah, myopia. Maybe I can. Myopia is really weird right now. And I don't like it. With targeting that southwest tile, it's really sketchy. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I actually could be healing off him. But let's just take down this shaman. Uh, the Minotaur is stuck up there. I can take down the Shaman, take down a Shockwave Colossus, and then I can take down the Manicor as well. And we'll just leave the Minotaur up there hanging out in no man's land. He's not causing us any risk right now. Right, it looks really messy, but this is actually a super spooned wave as well. I'll just tank this hit. I don't want that Manicor to see me. Not a big deal. And then I can just be healing off the Shockwave Colossus. And when he dies, it'll drag down that mana core, and we can deal with him as well. But yeah, this is it. Uh, 11 waves. We had Myopia 3. Uh, we were able to see that we can still beat the Colosseum, even with Myopia. On. It really didn't affect uh, too much of our blood barraging. Uh, at this point, we're really just using Blood Barrage to kind of um, heal. It's kind of like a nice little secondary option to heal. So we're not wasting our brews throughout the run. But we have so many brews anyway. It's really nice. Uh, the important things to note for this run in here. We don't need more health. Uh, the important things to note for this run are how to use the engage tile. How to engage on tick one using the visual metronome plugin. Right? We saw how we can drag out minotaurs when they're stuck in this little safe or in that little nook and cranny, and we're gonna do that again. We will be doing that again. We saw new ways to deal with the Fremnik clump where we don't have to deal with a bunch of switches and we can really just freeze them all in place. It's kinda brain dead. Really easy to do. Alright, dodge his little volatile explosion. And here we go. We got that ranger. He's going to be seeing me. So we'll pray range. 
run out here it'll drag that minotaur and then we run back to our safe spot and now we can deal with the minotaur all by himself we also got to see in those early waves how if we had the little the little um shaman the little major back there we can run as far back as possible way back here and run out and back in and that'll drag the shaman into place so very convenient that was really nice too we had a wave where we ended up running diagonal we had a different wave where we ran south and we had another wave still where we ran east so it's really convenient if you guys go back and watch how did i know which pillar i was going to go to for each of those different scenarios so let's see uh let's just take out the ranger i don't want to deal with dodging all the rangers attacks and all that they are both ranged so let's just deal with the ranger We're just watching for the mortar. That's the only thing we got to be careful of. Right? Just got to move for his mortar. Otherwise, we can just nuke him down. And I think that Colossus is coming in. I missed him. Oh, and just, just soak a zero. Wow. What a... Yeah, wow. Can't even hit me. So here we go. This move, I'm just going to run south. I am going to tank that Manicor's first range hit. I think I can actually do this. If I start here, it should be off tick. So here we go. There we go. So if I engage from that middle tile instead, and it's a range Manicor and not a mage Manicor, I can actually get that nice little off tick right there. It throws the major behind one tick of the mana core, and that way when my second tick, see right, it's range and then mage, uh, they will both be using the mage attack at the same time. So that was actually a really convenient uh, little strategy as well. If you didn't want to just face tank the mana core's first range hit, um, and that way you can just do a perfect little mana core flick running south, and you won't take that hit from the major either. So very convenient. Oops. I thought it was dead and just kind of ignored his middle head. There you go. You should be done now. All right. And the mana core is down. And here we go. It's the final mob. It's the final mob of all 11 waves. And it's actually nice. This run was kind of convenient. We got to see a lot of new strategy that we didn't see in that prior run that I had. Um, we got to see multiple waves that were not necessarily spooned right off the engage, right? And check it out, we're ending with just as many supplies as we had last time. We have just as many supplies as we had in the old video where we were doing a lot of myopia cheesing. What's our invos? Doom is still pretty bad. I guess it's okay for the final boss, but I, I don't really want to take Doom. I'll probably end up just taking Relentless 3 for the boss. Uh, Volatility 3 would be okay too. We didn't have Quartet. No Quartet for this fight. But, uh, yeah, the Invos have become a lot nicer than they used to be. I do really like this Invo change. The Myopia nerf isn't really bad at all. Um, this was, uh, this was a one and done, guys. This was done on the first attempt of the day. And to be honest, if you guys do have max gear, you can have even more defense than I do. You could be bringing a melee helm instead of this. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys got to see um, a couple new strategies. How to engage those waves, right? How to deal with some of the new invos. How to deal with the new myopia. How did I decide when was I going to run diagonal? When did I decide I could run south? And when was a good opportunity to run east? We got to see an opportunity for all three of those scenarios in this video. So go back and watch those. See what kind of criteria were met for me to decide which pillar was it the safest to run to. Which pillar would solve the wave the easiest. And I hope you guys learned a lot. And if you want to see the boss kill, I do have a guide down in the description below where you can watch a full commentary run of the boss kill and we'll go over all of his different special attacks and how we deal with them. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys had fun. 
And I hope you guys still try to attempt the Coliseum even after these new invocation changes. And I'll see you in the next one. Have fun, boys.